about the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program today, and we will we have existing Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors with us so that we can hear from them and uh, talk about their experience. So what we will do is in around next one hour, we will talk about MLSA. Elizabeth will brief us about what this program is and how it can benefit you in your journey. We will hear from existing MLSAs. Then I will do a bit of a tech talk and give a gentle overview of Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. And what are the career pathways on these uh, technical platforms which Microsoft has uh, released? And then we will do some closing and towards the end, we will do a Q&A. Uh, meet your speakers here. Today we have uh, Elizabeth from Microsoft, Neri and Vandan who are our MLSAs and myself, Rachid yes. Garg. So what we'll do is I'll just pass it on to Neri. Uh, Neri will introduce herself and then we will take it forward. Over to you, Neri. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Neri from South Korea. I'm studying a diploma of uh, IT at RMIT University in Melbourne. I recently joined um, MLSA in January 2024. I have a background in design. I have worked in design industry and healthcare as well. Uh, lots of people ask me why I decided to study in IT. During the pandemic, I spent more time studying at home with the uh, internet, <laughs> which is sparkled uh, my interest in IT, especially creating web and mobile application. Hi guys, uh, I'm Vandan uh, and I'm current uh, Alpha Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador and I'm currently studying Biotechnology at Swinburne University. I have volunteer experience at uh, many different organizations, so it's uh, great to uh, meet uh, you all and let's have a, have a catch up after the sessions. I'll pass on to Elizabeth now. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Papalato. I'm the community manager at Microsoft. I look after our amazing community leaders. So we have Vanden and Nari, they're our Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors. We have a Student Ambassador community. We have Rashid, who's part of our MVPs, Most Valuable Professional uh, Microsoft Communities. Um, and then also we have regional directors that I, I look after as well, which are more kind of our advisors to Microsoft. They're our C-level executives. Um, so uh, I love what I do because I get to really um, engage and empower uh, everyone within the community to learn and to grow and to understand the possibilities with um, the Microsoft ecosystem. So uh, I look forward to meeting you all today and, and sharing more. So thank you for uh, joining. And Rishi? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So myself, Rachid, guys, I'm based in Melbourne. I work in Microsoft Dynamics 365 space in the ERP sector. And yeah, I was recognized as most valuable professional this year. So I'm really uh, honored to achieve this award and I'm trying to give back to community as much as I can. So I'm here to help you, guide you. If you want to build your career in this space, feel free to reach out. But I'll uh, go to the next slide, uh, Elizabeth. Thanks. Alrighty, so yeah, I, um, I briefly talked about the communities that I look after. Um, so uh, that includes Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors. So this program um, is really about going on a journey of learning and following your curiosity, but then also sharing that learning with other people in your community. So um, I guess exercising that leadership, uh, uh, those leadership skills. Then our MVPs are those who are working in the workforce full time, um, and um, they're out there organizing events, writing blogs. They're out there sharing their sort of learnings from customers and clients and, and case studies that they come across every day. And they're sharing that with the community because that's how we learn by, you know, learning through real world problems and just being collaborative with each other. Um, and then we also have our regional directors. So if you want to go on to the next slide or press next, these are some ways that our members contribute to the community. 
Um, so uh, you could be a content creator writing blogs or making videos. You might want to speak at events. They do all sorts of things, but that's really what it means to be a community leader is, is giving back in different ways. Um, and uh, being recognised for that. And that's why we have these programs to really recognise the great work that our community leaders are doing. So if you want to go on to the next slide. So yeah, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors. So there's different, um, I guess, ways to be involved in this program. It's a program that's free for everyone. You have to be a full time university student or full time in Australia. We have TAFE. Um, so as long as you're enrolled in a tertiary education institution full time, then this is absolutely a program for you. Um, so we really look at sort of ways to build your um, your technical knowledge, but then also ways to exercise that leadership capacity. And I think eventually when you're looking for that dream job, um, you know, employees really love to see that you're proactive, that you've just not got that um, technical experience, but you've also got those other transferable skills, communication skills, leadership, um, maybe event planning, different things that shows that you're a great member for their team and you're going to add value in that workplace. Um, so in this program, we really help take you on that journey. And what does that journey look like? Um, so we have different, um, I guess, phases in the program. You could be at university for the next four years, or maybe you're graduating in a year's, year's time. There's still a place for you in this program, but we have different milestones, as you can see on the screen. Uh, so you will start at sort of the beginning, and we um, we kind of gamify it in a way or incentivize our ambassadors to take the next level and help them um, in that journey of, um, I guess, of being a successful community leader. Uh, so different ways that we um, engage uh, with our leaders is um, we have sort of challenges that we run, so cloud skills challenges or boot camps um, that you can take um, once you've sort of done the first phase of that, then you can go to the next phase and unlock beta or gold phase. Um, and maybe that's where you might want to showcase your learnings to other people and um, maybe do like a study group or something where people come together and you're all learning the tech, um, sort of the Microsoft technology stack together. Um, and then we incentivize you with different um, incentives or swag. Um, or maybe there's opportunities within Microsoft where you're engaging with the product engineers, for example, giving feedback. Imagine having that on your resume. You can give feedback to the um, to the Microsoft engineers. So I guess this program has really different opportunities. Um, but yeah, we try to sort of um, guide you along the way. So if you want to go to the next slide. So how do we sort of, um, oh, that might be too too far. If you want to go back one. Um, yeah, I think there's so, some animation there. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, Let's that's see. all right. Pause it, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, how, how do we do that? So you can connect with other students in this community. There is yeah. 4,000 uh, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors around the world. And essentially by being an ambassador, you are joining this community where you can sort of work together, be collaborative, take on challenges together, um, it, it host events together, um, do many different things. And we also have what we have on the screen here, it's called leagues. So you can even choose to be part of, so you've got your Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador community, but then we've got little micro communities within that community and we call them leagues. So leagues are um, kind of like your interest groups. So you might be interested in AI. There's a league for that. You might be interested in healthcare by, by industry maybe. So we've got leagues by industries or by social um, uh, social interests. So maybe sustainability um, or maybe you're really keen on um, data, for example, data platforms. So we've got different leagues that can really address I guess your curiosity and where you might want to take your career or what technology area you want to focus in. 
we've got kind of like subgroups within that as well. Um, so we've got workshops that you can be part of um, and different projects that you can sort of build together as part of the program. So if you want to move on to the next slide. Um, we also encourage you to um, along the way or, or the, the year of the program, we encourage you to be part of different initiatives. So we've got the leagues we just talked about. We have different challenges or boot camps that happen as well. But we also have a really cool competition uh, called Imagine Cup. So some of you might have heard of Imagine Cup, um, but basically it's a big tech um, project competition that we have teams from around the world that come together and build a project and they pitch it. And essentially they're in the running to win $100,000 US and a mentoring session with Satya Nadala, our CEO, um, and some uh, some teams that have won Imagine Cup have actually gone on to work with Microsoft and, and build out their project even more. So um, being part of this program, we try to deliver you different opportunities. And I guess my biggest tip is it's up to you what you wish to say yes to. Um, it's really the world is your oyster when it comes to this program. Uh, so we just try to empower you in different ways. So Imagine Cup is another really cool event on our calendar that we um, we encourage our students to be part of. So next slide. So when you go to the website, um, studentambassadors.com, and I will put the link in the chat, um, you can actually search on our website and connect with other students. So you can find ambassadors. Um, there should be something that says like find a student ambassador or a link on the um, top of the page. And um, this is a really cool sort of directory, I guess, of all our wonderful ambassadors, part of the community. You can see that they've linked their social channels as well. So you can find like-minded people in your community um, you might be working on a project or you might have a question about something that you're building and you don't really know what to do next. Maybe you can find a student ambassador within your community that can help you solve that problem. Um, uh, so you can go to their social channels, build your network as well, build your LinkedIn. We are talking at the beginning of this chat. Building your network is so important. Um, so you, you can really connect with people. You can search by country. You can search by region, um, and so you can even find people within your own local area. Um, on the website as well, we have testimonials, um, why people love being part of the Student Ambassador Program. Um, so Rashika says, the best part of being in this program is the opportunity to network with the global community. Um, Joshua talks about the experience of working in a team, connecting with other students and Microsoft employees that equips you with the leadership skills. Um, so we're going to hear today from Nari and Vanden as well about their experiences, but you can go uh, through the website and connect with student ambassadors as well that you um, yeah, might be inspired by. So if you want to go to the next slide. Another cool thing that you can do on the website is search for local events in your community um, region. There isn't too many in Australia, um, I have to admit. Um, we have um, a small number of student ambassadors in Australia and our hope is that we can empower others to, to join the community um, and to be part of this really awesome program. Um, so, yeah, um, there's opportunities to see events there. There might be online events too, so um, there'll be things that um, could be relevant for you as well. So if you want to go to the next slide. So I kind of briefed on this section earlier in my presentation, but who is eligible for the program? So you have to be minimum age 16 years old. Um, and it's a student ambassador program. And although we're all students every day in life, this is a special program for full-time uh, students that are in a accredited institution. Um, if you're maybe studying part-time, I encourage you to look at the MVP program that we talked about earlier. 
Um, so there's that opportunity and I'm happy to chat with you offline about that um, as well. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, um, it's full time university students essentially. So if that's you, feel free to to register and be part of the community. It's free. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, there might be the call to action there as well. Um, but all you need to do is just go to the link that I've put in the chat and click on that get started button and it will take you to a registration page. You just need to sign up, answer a few questions. So we sort of have an idea of what you're interested in because with those questions, we kind of shape the journey that you um, become uh, as a student ambassador. So I talked about different leagues and things like that. Um, when you join the community, there's different communities you can join within that. And that will take you to a Discord channel where you can engage with the community. Um, and then we encourage you to take a few onboarding sessions and then you can um, essentially be a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador and taking on those leadership um, roles within the community. So if you've got any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I think that might be my last slide, but if you want to keep going, we'll just see yeah. what else there is. If not, um, yeah. that's it. That's the last slide. Perfect. Great. Thanks, well, Elizabeth. If yeah. you have, thank you. If you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, and then I will keep answering throughout this um, this presentation. But thank you so much. I, I must say Discord is getting very popular. I created my profile on Discord and I was amazed to see how many people are already using it. And I went into a Microsoft server and there were like thousands of people who use Azure, Microsoft, Dynamics. So yeah, if you have not checked out that platform, create a profile get started and join the community yeah and just to that point sorry there are, there's actually microsoft in that as well so um yeah there's there's a great opportunity to grow your network and to see what's happening and you just never know what someone's going to post that could really help you it could be a free exam voucher that you come across or um a free cloud skills challenge um to take you on that learning um, and they're all really great opportunities that you should be taking advantage of as students you can build your resume out and your experience so yeah thank you so much cool thank you elizabeth uh, guys if there is any question uh, feel free to put it in the chat window we will go through them towards the end um, and before we now we will move to the next section of the event today where we have Nari and Vandan where we will talk in detail about their skills, their experience, what they do. And yeah, so we have Nari and Vandan's uh, connection info on the screen. Feel free to scan the code and connect with them on LinkedIn. And we can see Nari is currently with RMIT University and Vandan is with Swinburne. So Nari and Vandan, how are you today? Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, we are doing great, Richard. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for joining us today. It is great to hear uh, your feedback, your experience from MLSA program that can help other students to start their journey. So maybe to make it a little bit easy for you guys, we will start with some introduction about like what has inspired you to join the MLSA program and Tell us a bit about uh, your journey so far. Yeah, sure. So like, uh, my name is Vandan Kumar and I'm currently an Alpha Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. So I'll share a little bit about my background. I have previous volunteer experience at uh, many uh, glo globally renowned organizations like Google, Microsoft, uh, like I'm currently my volunteering, volunteering with Microsoft. I have previous volunteer experience with UN, UNICEF, I ISEC, and Rotary Conventions, and I mainly represent uh, TED Talks as well. And I was former licensee of TEDx LPU in India, and I currently represent TED Talks in Melbourne as uh, TEDx Clarendon Street. And I also, as a part-time job, as my casual job, I currently team lead at various stadiums within the city. I team lead at Marvel Stadium, Australia, uh, Melbourne and Olympic Parks and uh, Melbourne Cricket Club ground 
uh, be it any major event you have seen on social media, be it yesterday's Taylor Swift concert, Ed Sheeran's concert, Australian Open, Harry Styles concert. So I have worked there. And so like uh, why I would recommend Microsoft as a program is like I have I have been part of many globally renowned programs and I believe Microsoft is one of the programs that can like change your lives within months and like I'll share uh, some uh, like uh, how it can change. So like le let's say like if you start, if you are currently studying in a university, you have just started out, you're in your first sem. So like it is a great opportunity to be a part of Microsoft Learn Student Investor Program and like they have May, uh, like if you are starting any startup or funding, if you are starting out any project, project if you want to start out any tech project, so there is Imagine Cup at Microsoft, and so like the, uh, as Elizabeth, Elizabeth recently mentioned that you get a startup funding of around one fifty two thousand Australian dollars, and also like one more thing, so like after after you go through um, Imagine Cup, you also get the opportunity to get ment uh, mentorship mentorship session with Satya Nadella, who is CEO of. Uh, uh, Microsoft and I believe that's a great opportunity to be part of and as Microsoft like uh, I don't have much background in tech part as I am uh, although it says I am uh, like my background says I am currently studying biotechnology but it doesn't majorly include tech part so like I won't be your best guy to ask about the technical stuff and so that is why like I, I would be a great Example for students who are not in technical background. I believe with Microsoft you can uh, like uh, host events and be part of a greater community. So uh, like and organize events and create an amazing uh, It will be an amazing opportunity to uh, for you to network within the university and outside university. So like 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 let's work with me. So like like tell me like what does the event include? And then, then we break out some points. So, like, uh, and uh, normal any event you go to that includes four parts. That is volunteers, speakers, partners, and audience. So, like, when you establish yourself as an authentic brand, like you are using the name of Microsoft or any major brand, so you are already established. You are already hundred steps ahead of existing clubs within your university. You are already a thousand steps ahead of them because we are uh, there is already a established brand and authentic 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 brand which people trust. Like volunteers will be eager to join your club. Volunteers will be eager to be part of your uh, uh, opportunity uh, to your uh, of your club and contribute to your contribute to your goals. And speakers, Microsoft has amazing MVPs. Like uh, Rachit, I recently came across Rachit's profile. Rachit, like if I would have sent a mail to Rachit, I wouldn't have expected a reply from Rachit. But today I'm speaking with him, so it's like an like a lifetime opportunity for me to speak with Rachit. Like he has like a lot of experience. He has he has been senior manager at PwC, and like I'm uh, like I'm I'm glad to be part with speaking with Elizabeth. Elizabeth is like country head of Microsoft. Like it is like a huge, huge opportunity to be in speaking in front of them, and like like and, and so like uh, there will be a lot of speakers like MVPs. If you reach out to them, they will be happy to be part of your event. So we go two parts of our event sorted out. That is volunteers and speakers. So third part is partners. So like who wouldn't want to partner with Microsoft? There will be tech companies, AI AI companies, startups. Who would love to have Microsoft as their partner in their portfolio? Who would like? Uh, who's, who would dream to? Have, who would dream to land Microsoft as their partner? So like you would, you have already have like these parts components of your event sorted out. And the fourth part is audience. So like whenever there will be a Microsoft event, people people like look up to like these kind of brands. Like they know like like they expect a certain kind of quality content and quality speakers. So they like they will already be engaged uh, to uh, be part of your event. So you already got all parts of your event sorted out. That was volunteers, speakers, partners, and audience. And I believe, like, if even if you are not a part of technical, no, no, uh, not a part of technical background, it is a great opportunity for you uh, to 
enroll in this Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program. And even if you don't, are not passionate about this program, I, I believe it is still a uh, reflex uh, between your friend groups. Like I currently, I am currently representing Microsoft as an ambassador. Like just uh, one, uh, just few hours before I was coming in tram, and a friend of mine introduced me to his friends as Microsoft ambassador. And that was like a huge, huge opportunity for me and something like you could share as well. And like I, there was a group of four to five university students who didn't know me and I, I've never met them. They were new students. So I, a friend of mine introduced them as like a representative of, of Microsoft. So that was like that, that like excited me as well. Like that was an am amazing moment for me as well to share, to share and to be part of Microsoft community. And I believe like right now you have the best opportunity to part of uh, to be part of Microsoft because like uh, while I was starting in, in my bachelor's in India, I did some of my credits in India. We, we our university had around 200 to 300 active clubs. So we used to look for opportunities like these to be part of because most of our students had already started these kind of clubs, Google, Google clubs, Microsoft clubs, UN clubs, ISAC clubs. So we used to look for this kind of opportunity so that we could do something of our own that would be authentic and people would feel comfortable to attend to and we could create those amazing moments for people. And so I believe like right now Melbourne doesn't have that kind of community and like all the students who would love to be part of Microsoft like even us. So I believe right now is the best of, uh, time to be part of Microsoft and start something like Nary has recently started. Nary has recently started a club at uh, RMIT. So like so like she has she's making a wonderful uh, community at RMIT. So like you could start that kind of community at your university as well. And like you, you could like network with like anyone in the city. Like uh, I was working with a similar brand. So like I used to host events. So like I got an opportunity to like teach speakers uh, to be uh, to communicate with speakers whom I wouldn't have imagined to even like see them in the uh, see them in person. So like I'll tell you, so like I, I hosted some events and I got to meet some social media influencers with around 15 million subscriber base, some NGO leaders, uh, a vice president of Sony Pictures. And those are the speakers with, with whom I organized the event like in 2022. And this year I'm uh, uh, collaborating with speakers who are renowned, who are working with Elon Musk currently, who are billionaires. So like this is like one, one in a lifetime opportunity and you will get to teach them uh, how to give a talk, how to like what to wear, what to expect in the, your event event so it will be like you will be teaching them you will be communicating them so it is like a one in a lifetime opportunity for you to be part of i believe and so uh, I, I, in the last i would just say thanks a lot elizabeth and richard for giving me this opportunity like this is one of a lifetime opportunity for me eh, to be part of this community and to share this platform with you thank you thanks Vandan. Great speech and uh, yeah, we really like the insights you have given and it's not just that you are learning something technically, you are also growing your leadership skills and you are meeting with people, building your network, your friends know you as an MLSA. So that feels really good. And one key point which I will also include in my tech talk later today is that this is not only for technical folks. Even if you are from a non-technical background, there is so much to explore, so much to learn and upskill that you can get benefit from it. But thanks for that one then. Uh, let's hear from Mary. Mary, how is your experience? Why did you join MLS and how is it going so far? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the reason I joined the MLSA, to be honest, uh, the biggest reason was ambassador program run by Microsoft. But however, not only that reason, um, student uh, promote the program on YouTube and other video about the Imaging Cup 2023, what Elizabeth uh, spoke about last time. Um, it was really great. And um, the team Tawai from Kenya, they won the championship and it inspired me um, so much. So I feel like, oh, um, I want to be one of them and I look up the information and I apply uh, MLSA and I'm here. It was, uh, 
Um, Oh, sorry. What was the second question? <laughs> sorry, we were just hearing your experience. So how do you balance out your education and your activities in MLSA program, which you do? Um, as you know, I'm a, a full time student working uh, five day, uh, two days and studying five days and it's kind of busy life, but um. Uh, MLSA activity doesn't really take up too much time. Um, it's easy to handle and most of activities are uh, self-pacing uh, learning. I spend one or two hours for uh, online meeting week weekdays and spend more time researching for project on the weekend. Um, I think it's a pretty manageable. Yeah, I see a question in chat window along the same lines from Nara. So let's say roughly how much time do you spend being part of MLSA volunteer and doing the activities uh, on this platform? Let's say in a week, how much time do you spend? Oh, I think at least five hours. Because um, it, as I said, I just became uh, MLSA in January. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to do the technical onboarding and the learning pass, which is takes uh, seven hours all total. Yeah. Right, and you can do it at your ease, right? You don't need to finish it in one go. You can do it uh, in pieces. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, if you are too busy, you can just do little by little, one hour every day, or just if you have a weekend time, just yeah. go straight seven hours. Right, cool. Thank you for sharing the uh, insight. How much time do you spend? Uh, one then in MLSA activities? Uh, I believe there, there won't be much time requirement for this program. And yeah, also uh, I, I came across one point. I wanted to share this. And I, uh, so like uh, after this started, I just came across this point. So MLSA also provides peer mentorship program where you will be allocated pandas from like around the globe. You might, you will be sitting in Melbourne, you'll have a mentor from UK or USA or from Nepal or Vietnam. And so they'll, so they'll be gold, gold investors, gold Microsoft investors who will help you in every way, wherever you need in your life with the technical onboardings and for the progress progression with the uh, levels. So uh, and so like I believe that you 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 even even if you will uh, spend around three to four hours of fortnight of, on fortnightly basis, I believe even that would be like sufficient for you to be consistent with the program. I believe even that could be a, uh, that could provide you a great deal. But this is like as this is like as much you are passionate about, you can contribute more. Like if you are passionate more about this program, you want to host more events. So it can be like a like. Like it depends on you, you like how much you want to contribute, how much you want to net network within people, how much you want to explore this field. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's good to know and for everyone who is in the call that you can pace it at your own speed and you don't need to uh, worry about finishing everything in one day. Cool. <clears throat> um, Elizabeth, anything in your mind you want to ask? And then I can jump into my tech talk session for around 15, 20 minutes. Um, I guess, do you have any final words for those that are um, yeah, interested in joining um, or wanting to sort of make an impact to their community, but they don't know how to or where to start? So yeah, just final words of inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Nario Vanden. Yeah. Sorry, anyone of you can go first. Maybe let's start with one then. You want to go first? Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, I would just say like it is a huge platform and it, it provides huge opportunity. Like this can change your lives. Like like is this can change your career lives in a way you would have never imagined. And uh, like on the other scale, it can just be a, 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 a column in your resume and flex between your friends as well. So like this can, this holds the potential to change your lives as well, but this depends on how you use it. 
and so like you get to meet you get to meet speakers and you can invite speakers from like around the city from like different uh, companies around the city like the mvps and regional directors who are like who are currently in the industry leaders like fintech yeah. leaders like rachit ai ai leaders you can invite them at your platform and you can like give students within your community a amazing opportunity to meet them so i believe it it is a great opportunity for you to be part of thank you and then mary any closing remarks from your side um, on your <laughs> Uh, as my experience, um, MLSA is really uh, good for your uh, study and uh, your um, future work as well, because um, there are a discussion board in MLSA. You can communicate with the global student community, which is you can get a mentorship uh, help and then you can connect with a professional like a Lanchit or Elizabeth, who else, um, the community manager. Uh, and um, MLSA has a Azure subscription and credit, so you can use uh, most of the Microsoft product. You could start with a Python, JavaScript, or React hands-on project, project and deploy application or AI service whatsoever. Um, those product also helps um, fill your uh, resume out. So just please yeah. join the MLSA. <laughs> cool, cool. Thanks, Neri. I think that's a very good point you called out that you get some free credits in Azure and you can then spin up your own lab, deploy your own uh, apps, and you know get get hands-on experience. Uh, yes. Otherwise, you end up paying from your pocket. <laughs> cool. And um, oh, so yeah. we are um, actually I'm making a student group and then uh, posting some of the MLSA information in my Instagram. I mean, not my Instagram. <laughs> it's a Melbourne MLSA. So please uh, yeah. check the Instagram, please. I will yeah. updating all the information. Yeah, scan the QR code. It takes you to the Instagram page, which Neri is talking about. That's an MLSA Melbourne uh, page where you can keep yourself updated and with all the learnings Neri is uh, taking from MLSA program. All right, anyone from audience who wants to ask Vandana or Neri a question before I jump into a quick TED talk? I saw Darwin's. Uh, question. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll answer it in the chat. Yeah. As long yeah. as you're a full time, you know, um, a full time student. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Uh, just to answer Vishal's question. Yes, there are face to face conferences as well. Uh, and just depending on the timing and people's availability, we can always switch between a remote session and a in person event. All right, time to dive into some technical details. So before I move on, thank you, Neri and Vandan. Really appreciate your time and insights which you have shared with us. So guys, for the next 15, 20 minutes, what I will be talking about is a very gentle introduction to Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. So if you know this field, great. If you are hearing for the first time, then this is definitely an area you should check out and try to explore. And uh, if you like it, you can definitely have a great and rewarding career in this space. A quick uh, detailed introduction about myself. So I am a Dynamics 365 and Power Platform enthusiast. I've been working in this space for almost 19 years now. I started my career as a X++ developer. Yes, X++ is a programming language. If you have never heard it before, it, it is one programming language, very similar to C Sharp, but I'm writing this code since year 2005. So I've spent uh, my entire career mostly in the technical space, uh, but being uh, an ERP product, it always gave me exposure to the business processes and different type of industries, which I'll talk about. I currently work as a principal technical architect with Velrada based in Melbourne, and I got recognized as MVP this year. I'm also a founder member and volunteers in few of the user groups, which are 
are focused on knowledge sharing related to Dynamics 365 platform. So if you feel interested in this product and this platform, you can just search on LinkedIn on these uh, user group names and join us. And you can also scan these QR codes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. So before I talk more about Dynamics 365, I will first talk about what are typical needs from an IT perspective of an enterprise. So think of yourself as an entrepreneur. You are running a business. You have a sports uh, showroom. You are a manufacturer of sports uh, equipment. You buy them, you sell them on various platforms. So and you need to build your digital uh, uh, platform. So what will be your key requirements? Your key requirements is a cloud infrastructure. Where, where will you host your applications? How you will manage your users, their identities, their accounts? And then cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is all about securing your organization data, access, so that nothing is going in the wrong hands. Then you need something called as business applications. Now these are the applications which allows your employees to perform their day-to-day -day task. You might be a, a accounts payable person who needs to process a payment for a vendor. You might be someone in the store who is going to bill and create invoice for the customers and take payments from them. You might be someone in the warehouse who, who need to move goods from your distribution center to your retail store. So depending on the nature of your business, you need people who are doing those tasks and then you need applications for those people so that they can do these type of activities. For example, HR, for example, finance. You need someone to do budgeting, forecasting, consolidation, regulatory reporting. So all these all these type of tasks are done in a application called as business application. Then there is an importance of integration platform. Every company has integration platform where they bring in the data from multiple applications. They try to or uh, you know synchronize data between multiple application if something happens in my front office something needs to happen in my back office and then uh, another important which is quite a buzz is data and analytics platform which is where getting a consolidated view of what is happening in my company how much inventory do i have how much what's my financial position what are my employees doing where is my process blocked so getting a 360 degree view of your enterprise data is key for any company AI and ML innovation. We are in the most exciting times of technology evolution where AI has kicked in. Chat GPT has turned one year old. Microsoft and OpenAI have a very strong collaboration in this space. So companies are looking forward to invest and um, do some research and development in AI and adopt these models and platforms to, again, the objective is to increase the efficiency of their organization, do more with less. <clears throat> Another very important thing for any enterprise is the industry compliance and reporting. Doesn't matter which industry you are into, you have to follow the compliance and regulatory requirements. You have to submit your government tax uh, documents. And so you need those compliance in, baked into your technology. And then modern work is all about improving your employee experiences using Office 365, Microsoft 365, and Copilot products. And this, this is all generic. It could be any cloud, any product, but this is a need of every organization. So if you are doing your education in data, integration, cloud, AI, you have an area where you can go and contribute. It's for everyone, even in business application space. So what is business application? Business application is basically a set of, think of it as a software, but it's a connected software which allows to synchronize all and all your business processes and harmonize them. So when you look at any typical enterprise, again, think of yourself as an entrepreneur. Now you are having a sports, you're a sports giant. You have to do all these operations in your company. You have to procure stuff. You have to manage your vendors. You have to purchase your goods. You have to make them payments. This is not a complete list. I'm just giving you an example. Similarly, if you have a warehouse and a distribution center, you need to receive goods. You need to store them. You need to found them. You need to pick and ship them. You need to do a transportation management of your uh, trucks, or if you're using a third party logistics provider, you need to talk to their systems, right? 
Similarly, if you are into sales department, you have to manage your sales order, your customer invoices, their payments. You might get order from a call center. You might be having a business to business selling agreements. You might have subscription billing. For example, Netflix is a very common example of subscription billing. Similarly, in the area of finance, you manage your chart of accounts, your general ledger, you do budgeting, forecasting, you do your bank management, you have accounts in 15 different branches all across Australia, and then you need to manage and consolidate all the statements and payments, and then you need to report on that and consolidate everything. If you are into an asset intensive industry, you need to do asset management where you need to acquire assets, you may buy a big uh, machine to you know, manufacture your sports equipment, and then you need to maintain it, service it. You need to do the accounting from a depreciation perspective, and then you dispose it. If you are into retail and commerce, you need to do your store management. You need to have an online commerce platform to sell your products. You need point of sale devices installed in your uh, in your centers where customers can bill. For example, you go to Coles, you do your transaction. That's a point of sale system. You have to manage your promotions and assortments and rebates, all these things are managed centrally. Pricing management is key nowadays. If you are into the area of HR, you are doing recruitment, you are hiring people, onboarding them, then you have to take care of their performance and upskilling and run their payroll. And let's say if they leave or they retire, you have to offboard them from the system. If you are into marketing space, you do your campaign, you do your case management, and you also do your service management because customers who have bought your goods might need an after sales service. And the one of the uh, biggest area is also projects management, where you manage your contracts on multiple projects. If you are, let's say, creating a multi-billion dollar new airport somewhere, you need this project management and accounting module where you manage your projects, your billing milestones, your work breakdown structure, and your resource allocation. So whatever I have told so far is purely from business perspective. It's not technical, but I'm trying to give you a view of how wide this technology is spread. It is helping every sector of a company to operate efficiently. And everyone in these in these different departments need a system to work. But what happens is, in what has been happening is companies are using a very specific software for these processes. And what that does is it creates your application silos and it creates, creates your data silos. For example, the inventory data is all sitting in one software. It's not synchronized to your finance data, and then you can't do a real-time reporting. So these, these are the three biggest challenges we have been seeing for most of the big enterprises when they implement any IT system. So what does Microsoft Dynamics 365 do and help to solve these challenges? That it is a collection of business applications. All these different business applications are built on top of Microsoft Azure as the cloud platform and Power Platform as their, uh, you know, as the compute platform. So these applications have a central database, centralized security, centralized reporting, and this resolves a lot of pain point for customers. You can use this link. We can share it in the chat window and read about these case studies where the big enterprises are using Dynamics 365 to run their operations. And you can then go on this link and you can find how they are using it. What are they using it for? And if you will see here, you have Michael Hill, which is a jewelry store. Majans is more into manufacturing of snacks. You have Breville, you have Dialog, you have RAC, governments, and uh, they, the, the list is very long. I've just picked a few. Uh, there is a healthcare client of Velrata as well here in the list. So feel free to check out the case studies on Microsoft side on how Dynamics 365 and Power Platform is being used by the organizations. So if we go one layer deep, these Dynamics 365 business applications are divided into two categories. One is the finance and operations app and the another one is customer engagement app. And they both have different architecture. So customer engagement apps are powered by Microsoft Power Platform and finance and operations apps have a service fabric architecture and the legacy name of this application is Microsoft Dynamics AX. So all the finance, supply chain, commerce and human resource management capabilities lie into finance and operations apps and all the customer facing functionalities like case management, customer service, sales, project operations, field service, these type of business capabilities lies in customer engagement app. Now the finance and operation app is 
has been in market for more than 25 years. This product was first released in the year 1998, and it's a Danish product which was uh, released by a Danish company called Damgard Data, even before Microsoft acquired it. So in 1998, it got released. It got merged with Navision Software in the year 2000. And year 2002, Microsoft acquired this product and they called it Exapta. Since then, Microsoft has been investing in this product, improving its efficiency, adding more functionality, and upgrading the technology platform. So from year 2002 to 2024, where we are, Microsoft has released various versions of the product. So if you, let's say, read about AX 2009 or AX 2012, you can it can ring a bell to you when you read this case study. So then became the cloud version of this product in 2016 when Microsoft released it, it, it on cloud. And since then, they have been adding more and more and more to it. And now today in 2024, we have co-pilot capabilities. We have one Dynamics, one platform, which is merging the uh, service fabric with power platform architecture and we have uh, some very uh, premium capabilities on advanced planning and analytics in the product so if we look at the architecture now i'm talking about finance and operations we look at the architecture a very simple view is it is deployed in your azure tenant and it is all hosted under microsoft subscription so you basically buy it as any other subscription based app and then it connects to your internal admin center, Azure DevOps, and back office uh, Active Server directory. If you go into a detailed view, if you are more of a technical person, you can then look at this slide where we use an Azure Traffic Manager to manage the traffic. Then there's a load balancer which uh, you know splits the load between multiple servers behind the scene, and these servers basically run the business operations. And the business logic is executed here, and the database is a SQL Azure. So this is how uh, it, it is from a technical perspective, and all this data can feed into your data layer, which is where all your reporting and analytics happen. Right. So when it comes to this application, uh, now in technical also, there are multiple streams. One of the stream is the development where we write code. We write X++ code, which is very similar to C Sharp, and it's a part of uh, .NET family. We use Visual Studio to write this code, and the key a, the key differentiator of this programming language is that it has a very strong data access. So you, if you have to access your database tables, you can do it from this programming language directly. Think of it as a link in C Sharp. It has its own query uh, querying um, classes and a framework. It has a very tight integration with the metadata, and one very nice thing is you can change the behavior of the class without actually modifying the source code. So we have a class augmentation concept, which is X++ concept, wherein you can write something like this, uh, where you can modify the behavior of a standard object without actually touching it. So that's quite cool. I'll share a link where one of the Microsoft engineers said that X++ is the most extensible programming language on the planet. So there is so much to explore in this space. Uh, when it comes to integration, uh, finance and operations and Dataverse and Power Platform, they have like plethora of integration frameworks in place to handle your business scenarios. We can connect to your external vendor catalogs. We can use electronic reporting to do your regulatory reporting and all sort of synchronous and asynchronous integration patterns are supported by this product. So if you are into Azure cloud engineering space, this is an area where you can build your career. You can use APIM, Logic App, Azure Functions, Service Bus, Event Grid. There is a native integration of all these platforms with Dynamics 365 and Power Platform to speed up your integration journey in an enterprise. Why I'm telling you is I'm trying to connect the dots. All the needs of an enterprise is, are solved by this platform, a single platform, and it's very much in demand. Reporting architecture. So Microsoft Fabric is the reporting and analytics architecture of Microsoft, where you have multiple capabilities. Uh, recently, Microsoft released One Lake and Data Activator. Power BI is a component of it. So Power BI, though itself is a very great visualization tool, but there are many more data and reporting tools available in the Microsoft Fabric landscape. So what happens is the data from all your business application you see on the left, they go through this thing called as a synapse link. Think of it as a bridge. It, it feeds all the data into Microsoft Fabric. And once your data is into Microsoft Fabric, 
what you get is a consolidated view of all your business application data into the data layer, and that's where you can run your data analytics and reporting for your company. Fast forward to today, Copilot. If you have heard this name Copilot a lot and OpenAI and Microsoft collaboration. So what Microsoft has done is they have collaborated with OpenAI and they have created these large language models which are already pre-trained on a large set of data and they are pre-deployed. So what Copilot does is Copilot uses these large language models to take input from your business applications and give you a response. So if you look at this simple architecture, yeah, the business applications from Dynamics 365 and Power Platform are feeding to Copilot. Copilot is using the large language models to execute the prompt and then it gives you back the result. Now, when it comes to business applications, how are these business applications taking advantage of these Copilots? I have listed few Copilot capabilities in the Finance and Operations app. Assume you again, if you wear the hat of your that entrepreneur who is running a, a sports equipment uh, supply chain and uh, company, you have ordered something from the vendor and you have promised something to a customer. Now let's say your vendor has called you and say, hey, I can't deliver it today. I can deliver it next week. Now your whole supply chain is disrupted. Whatever the goods you are about to receive today, they will be received next week. How does it impact your whole supply chain? Now, these type of capabilities are built in the using the co-pilot. It can tell your supply chain guys, hey, your order is delayed. You should talk to this customer and tell and inform them immediately. Similarly, there is a demand planning application, which is basically looking at all your sales forecasting data and all your last history, and it will tell you how much you should procure and when. There are extended planning and analytics engine, uh, which is more about finance and uh, GL. There is a budget proposal. There's a cash flow forecast wherein these models can help you to predict your future cash flow of the company, your, your customer payment prediction. If a customer always defaults a payment, you will get a prompt that, hey, talk to this customer before the payment gets due because he has been regularly defaulting the payment. So it helps you to improve your cash flow. And cash flow is really the you know blood of any company. Think of it as something uh, which increases the cash flow from your inbound to outbound. So let's say vendors are getting paid quickly. If a vendor is getting paid quickly, they can buy gifts to their children quickly, right? So it's all about supply chain. You get money from the customer, you pay to your vendor. As long as this automation is in place, it can speed up the whole experience and it can help in really different ways and it can create a big impact on the community. So what are the career pathways? My story which I have told, but what are your career pathways? So generally, there are two type of roles. You can either choose a functional area of your choice. If you are from finance background, supply chain, manufacturing, retail, commerce, asset management, project management, human resources. If you are someone who has good knowledge of this industry or who has an ex, uh, you know, who wants to uh, grow in this industry, you can become a role of functional consultant, or you can become a technical consultant where you can write X++ code, you can build integration, you can do reporting, mm -hmm. you can build AI tools, you can be a power platform developer, or you can be a system administrator who manages the whole application and environments. And as you grow in this journey, you, you will see these different titles which gets attached to you. So you start as an associate, you become a consultant, then you become a senior consultant, then you become an architect, then you become a solution architect. So solution architect are people like who know almost everything, <laughs> but basically it's all because of experience. One good thing in this industry is that like you work with different clients, different industries, you learn a lot of different business processes and you know how companies are utilizing the technology to run their business, right? So there is always an aspect of business users when you are in this field. And also I would encourage you to uh, look at Microsoft Learn. We can share some links. There are very well uh, defined courses on Microsoft Learn. And then there are certification pathways. So in order for you to step up in a more structured way and uh, you know upskill yourself in the area of your choice, you can actually uh, do these certifications. So there is a fundamental certifications on ERP, which helps you to kickstart your journey. And then based on your experience, if you want to be a finance consultant, you can give this finance functional consultant associate certification. If you are into supply chain area, you can give supply chain management functional consultant expert certification. 
if you are into development space you can give finance and operations developer associate once you give these certifications you can give the solution architecture certification there is another erp called as business central by microsoft which is for small and medium uh, companies but that's also a very great erp so if you want to um, explore that feel free to check it out then there are certifications in power platform space power platform fundamentals power platform app maker so this is where you have like a no code low code experience and if you are more into business side you don't want to write a lot of code this is an area which you can explore uh, where you can create apps and if you can use powerpoint and excel you can make an app that's the whole idea of power platform but it also has pro code uh, capability so if you are a hardcore developer and you want to still work on power platform side you can uh, transform your career in that space apart from the finance and operations and power platform there are certifications available in the customer engagement applications which i talked so there is a sales functional consultant associate a marketing functional consultant associate customer service field service and customer data platform so there are a lot of uh, career opportunities in this space uh, i would like to play one quick video uh, before i uh, open up for q and a just give me a minute uh to do that i will basically need to turn this on just on time sorry to uh go a bit over but is my screen visible yeah it's loading so, now yeah yeah we can see it cause awesome so i'll just play this video for you Let me know. Uh, I think it should start soon. Good morning. That's the latest Copilot teaser to share with you guys. So yeah, that was the tech talk from my side. Happy to take any questions now, guys. Feel free to uh, unmute yourself, or if you have any burning questions, we are happy to answer. We can hang around for a few more minutes if you guys are free. But yeah, let's take some questions. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. Not, I'm the speaker, but still, like, I have a question to ask. Like, I wanted to yeah. ask. Like, like recently, like we we do have some students from uh, in uh, different countries as well, like Philippines and India as well. So I wanted to ask on their behalf. Like recently, there was a change in Microsoft website for the pro pro uh, process of becoming Microsoft Learn student ambassador. Like Elizabeth, you mentioned that. Like in like. Now we don't need to make videos and we can just join the Discord channel. So is it just for the APEC region or for, uh, for the for all around the world? Because I'm not sure because I think in some regions it is still going by the video process. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm. I was not sure. That, that's a good pro uh, that's a good question, Mandan, and it's for everyone around the world. It's the same process for everyone. And mm -hmm. just for context, because people might not know. Before we had Discord, um, up until a few months ago, um, to apply for the program, you had to do a whole submission, answer questions, do a video, but we're making it more accessible for everyone to join the community. So once you um, click on the Get Started uh, button on the, on the website, you fill out some questions, um, and then essentially 
you can just join the Discord and then that's it if you really want <laughs> to do nothing else. Um, but if you want to sort of be successful as a community leader and in your learning, then we encourage you to take on the learning paths and, and there's different milestones that I mentioned. So it's open for everyone um, and it's very inclusive. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think that change is introduced recently because till like last year, I believe, uh, students were required to create a video and share it, but now I, I think that's not a requirement. But yeah, feel free to check out that FAQ link page, which Elizabeth had shared. I think the best way is to just get started, <laughs> fill your profile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Right. <clears throat> and yeah, if uh, I think we are on LinkedIn, guys, so if you have any questions later on as well, feel free to reach out. You might have received those who have registered an automatic email. Uh, it has my email address. So if if there is any question or query or anyone needs any uh, pathway or direction, let me know and I'll be happy to help. Definitely, I'm also here as well if you've got any questions. Yeah, from, from my side also, thanks a lot, Rachit and Elizabeth, for giving us this platform and for giving this opportunity to uh, be in this session. And I just wanted to say, like, if you have any technical queries or if you have anything, Nari is the best option. And if you want to know something more about the events, like, uh, or you can ask me. And if you have any other broad queries, I believe, like, I'll tell you a secret, like, Elizabeth is country head and she manages all the regions. Still, like, she won't ever be frustrated by your mails. Like, you can send her mail, you can send her mails <laughs> every day and she will still respond. Well, she's every an day. amazing person. Like, <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen such a responsive person in my whole life. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for giving you this opportunity. That's very sweet. Thank you. But yeah, we're and I think that's the whole essence of this program is that we're a community and um, student ambassador community, MVP community that Rashid represents as well. Like we're all under one team essentially um, and we're all here to support each other and um, people are the heart of community. So if you want to be part of something that can really inspire and empower you, then I think this is a, a great platform to help you get there and, and learn and grow as well as a person and a professional, I mean. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, guys. Okay. So, yeah, uh, if there is any question, yes, you uh, just drop in the chat window, reach out to us. But, yeah, I wish everyone a great day ahead, evening ahead. And thank you, Neri and Vandan, once again. Thanks, Elizabeth, for giving us your time and joining us in this session. I think we, we need to do more of this. Maybe <laughs> next next session, uh, join us again, guys. If you become MLSA, let us know. We'll have another similar session we'll, where Neri and Vandan will have more, more MLSAs to support them. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Have a good afternoon or evening, everyone, and thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.